Hello, I'm Nat Ford, Chief Executive Officer of the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. I want to thank you for attending today's public meeting regarding JTA's proposed fare changes. Your interest in JTA is much appreciated. The JTA has provided transit services in Jacksonville since 1971. That's almost five decades, and in that time we've only raised fares four times. This would be the fifth and the first time since I've served as your CEO. When I became CEO a little over six years ago, I promised to deliver you a world-class transportation system. You wanted newer buses, better and more frequent service, and more bus shelters. All of those requests were valid. I think you'll agree we've delivered on that and more. It all began with our route optimization initiative that completely transformed the bus system. We expanded our operating hours, especially on the weekends, and made routes more direct and easier to understand. You responded by riding more. In fact, ridership climbed nearly 6% after ROI, and we thank you for that. In 2013, our on-time performance was significantly underperforming at only 65%. Now our on-time performance is up to 80% and still climbing, but we are still not satisfied, so we keep working. We address the need to have more buses coming more often. In 2014, there were only two routes with 30-minute frequency and none with 15 minutes or better service. Now there are 13 routes running at 30-minute frequency and five operating every 10 to 15 minutes. Three of those routes running with 10-minute frequency are part of our First Coast Flyer Line, a streamlined limited stop service running between downtown and the north side, south to the avenues, and another to Jacksonville Beach. With the flyer routes came all new compressed natural gas buses. Nearly half of our current fleet, 88 buses so far, are now running cleaner, quieter, and more efficiently on CNG. By partnering with the private sector, we've been able to provide you with more and better travel options while reducing costs and increasing customer convenience. ReadyRide, for example, is our new on-demand service. It operates in five neighborhood zones throughout the city and is perfect for those short, nearby trips. At the beaches, our year-round partnership with Beachside Buggies replaced our seasonal trolley service with terrific results. This on-demand, door-to-door option is the perfect example of getting more bang for our buck while providing a more expansive service to you. The JTA also took over the St. John's River Ferry in 2016. Since then, we've overhauled the boat and installed all new infrastructure at both the Mayport and Fort George Island landings to keep the ferry running for years to come. The outcome, record ridership. There are three new transit hubs for your convenience and comfort. On Sutel Drive and at the Armsdale and Avenues Walk Park and Ride locations. Both Armsdale and Avenues Walk are equipped with indoor customer service centers featuring restrooms, ticketing, vending, and waiting areas. We've also made it easier to plan your trip or purchase a ticket with our MyJTA mobile app. You can track your bus in real time with NextBus and send a safety or security alert with our See and Stay app. All of these upgrades from the CNG buses to the new mobile apps to the new transit hubs have one sole purpose, to improve the customer experience for you. But we're not done. We also know that it takes more than fancy new buses to keep you riding. So we added free Wi-Fi to all JTA vehicles so you can listen to music, work on your laptop, shop, or check your email during your trip. We're adding a fourth flyer line between downtown and Orange Park and have started construction on another new transit hub at University Boulevard and Phillips Highway. But perhaps the most important transportation upgrade in the history of Jacksonville is currently under construction. The new Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa will be a world-class mobility center that will incorporate buses, the flyer, the Skyway, and eventually the U2C autonomous system, connection, taxis, Uber, and Lyft, and other shared ride services all in one location. One important note is that the capital construction projects like the JRTC are paid for using capital funds, not our operating budget. So not a penny from our fare box revenue goes to pay for any of JTA's capital construction projects. I know I've given you a lot to think about, but it's important for you to understand just how hard we have been working to give you a world-class transportation system. But new buses, new service options, and longer operating hours come with a price. A better transportation system comes with a price. 
These considerations are not taken lightly. All of us here at the JTA live in this community. We understand the responsibility we have each and every day in transporting thousands of people to their destinations. We do it promptly, we do it safely. We connect towns and neighborhoods. We make our large city a little bit smaller, a little bit closer. But we go far beyond just providing your transportation. We are a valuable member of the community in so many ways. Since the fall of 2016, JTA has participated in the Big Brothers Big Sisters program by partnering with kids from Baldwin Middle and Senior High School's Digital Communications program. 18 students meet each month with their JTA Big Brother or Sister where they receive industry-based training and learn about all the great and exciting work that JTA does. Our community outreach program, JTA Cares, partnered with the Salzbacher Village to provide a career closet for women to use when they require professional and business attire for job interviews or that new job. Donations from JTA employees and companies like the Mayo Clinic and KPMG have packed the career closet with more than 200 pairs of shoes, 100 purses, and over 300 suits and dresses. The closet also spawned a new idea for a pop-up boutique at local job fairs. Ladies who are offered a job or a job interview at the fair receive a free outfit of their choice to get them started. We have also provided an opportunity to the City Rescue Mission to allow ladies in their program to receive outfits. Between the two pop-up boutiques this year and City Rescue Mission giveaways, JTA Cares has provided more than 50 outfits. In partnership with our unions, the IAM and ATU, the JTA and its employees also provided 45 full Thanksgiving baskets to families experiencing their first Thanksgiving in their new home at the Salzbacher Village. We also assembled and distributed care packages for both employees, family members going off to college and those deployed overseas in the military, as well as an additional 400 care packages for the homeless. In total, over 100 employees donated volunteer hours, items, or money for our various community outreach initiatives. You may have seen our Rosa Parks Produce Market, or perhaps you were one of the nearly 12,000 people who purchased some fresh fruits or vegetables yourself. The market is now in its third year in helping to combat the glaring issue of food deserts in Jacksonville. The market is open each Friday at the Rosa Parks Transit Station. Proceeds of the market go to the students of I'm a Star Foundation for their school expenses. And since transit is our specialty, we also sponsor the shuttle for the City of Jacksonville and Salzbacher Center's Urban Rest Stop, where homeless individuals can take a shower, wash clothes, read books, and rest. The JTA provided laundry pods for the grand opening of the Endeavor, as well as towels and toiletries. And beyond our daily transportation services we provide to you, our regular customers, we also provide emergency services like we did during the recent plane incident at NAS Jacks or providing transportation to all of our neighbors in Bay County after Hurricane Michael ripped through their community. I'm telling you this for a reason. I want you to know that our reach into this community goes much further than any of our buses will ever travel. What we do is important. It has intrinsic value. So when I tell you now is the time for us to increase fares, know that we fully understand what every nickel, every dime, and every quarter means to you. Fortunately, for the past seven years, we've been able to provide all of these important services and upgrades without any fare increases. But our fare box revenue is a critical portion of our operational sustainability. And frankly, we can't continue to move forward while still operating on a nearly decade-old fare structure. I want to thank you for your attention. And please keep watching this presentation to learn more about the specific details of our proposal. <music>